Hello, hello, hello and welcome to module 10 and we're finally going to go into photo colorization. But before we do so, I'm going to share with you some of my research methods uh, in order to try to be as um, color uh, historically uh, adequate as possible. Okay. Uh, the reason for this is because we don't want to use photocolorization to change history. What we're trying to do is we're trying to enhance history, we're trying to make these photos maybe more appealing for the younger generation um, in order to promote history, in order to, to keep history alive. Um, now, uh, sometimes people might think, oh gosh, but how do I do a research? How do I know? It's just, I wouldn't know where to start. Okay. Well, it's not that difficult really. So we, we're gonna look into different things you can do. Uh, the first one is the oldest type of research in the world. And of course that is books. Uh, and I do have a collection of books that I wanna talk to you about. Uh, and I will put a list of all the links for these books so you can actually look at them. And if you want to buy any of them, it's fine. Now I don't get any commission from this. So I'm not promoting the books because I'm getting something out of it. I'm, I'm promoting the books because these are books that I use uh, and books that I love. Okay, now the first book I'm going to share with you is this one. Okay, this is, is quite an old book now. It's uh, called The Family Photo Detective uh, and it's by Maureen Taylor. Now, uh, Maureen, uh, she, she's an American uh, photo specialist. Uh, I've had the, the honor of actually connecting to her via, via social media and uh, of talking to her and she has been a, a hero of mine for many years, even before I started um, uh, doing what I do professionally. Uh, this book is excellent if you're trying to date photos. Uh, she, she gives you a lot of ideas of what to look for, what kind of symbolisms to look for, um, uh, basically how to organize your photo collection. It's a brilliant book uh, and it, then it has these pages uh, which give like dated little details of what to look for in order to date the photo. So if, you, if you're thinking about dating photos, this is really, really good. Uh, now, going back to the coloring uh, side of things, uh, this is uh, one of my favorites and this is here. The costume history, okay? The costume history. Basically, um, some books just scream out to be bought and this is definitely one of them. Uh, it's got beautiful, beautiful illustrations all through. Uh, and not only it covers the, 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 the history of the costumes with like color plates and things like that. It actually uh, talks about um, clothing and um, attire in different parts of the world so it's it's really really good uh, it's a really really good book to to have and to to read uh, and obviously it does um, it does cover a lot of things so it's 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 a beautiful book definitely worth to to buy and very cheap you can get it second hand on amazon uh, very very cheap now another very similar book to this is this one so this is what people wore when okay now the reason why this one is is uh, very good as well it actually gives a little bit more detail and it covers uh, things like uh, Europe a little bit more in detail which for me is very good because uh, what someone was wearing in France in the 1870s, it's not exactly the same colors or the same patterns that was being worn in, um, in the United States, for example, uh, or in England. So this book really helps me decide, depending on where the photo is come from, uh, what colors to use. So that's really good. Then uh, we have these pair uh, which I love, which basically is how to read a suit and how to read a dress. So basically it helps you with dating photos as well, but it's got a lot of images in color. So you can actually look at the dresses, how they were made. And of course, in the, the suit version of it, it's the same, but with suits, but obviously I like dresses more. Um, okay, and then if you want to go really academic and really learn the nitty-gritty and the things behind it, 
um, and I'm quite geeky like that, uh, then you can go for something a bit more detail like for example 20th century fashion in detail okay so this one uh, will not only show you the um, the colors and the patterns but it actually talks about uh, things like the laces and the buttons and the undergarments things that uh, I don't colorize because they're underneath the clothes but I'm still very interested uh, to see um, how they worked and, uh, and uh, how they were made and obviously I've got two I've got one for the 20th century and I've got another one for the 19th century okay they're both really good books they, they were published by the Victorian Albert Museum of which I'm going to speak to you about in just a second so they're really really good now so these are, these are the, the books uh, there are many more books available uh, but this this is a good little collection uh, to get you started if you're interested in using books uh, to do your research then uh, another way to to um, uh, research the colors that people are wearing is a very enjoyable way which I love which is watching period dramas of course we have to be a little bit careful with what period dramas we choose because sometimes people take a bit of artistic licensing but uh, I would say that well 99% of the times uh, if you watch something by the BBC they are actually pretty pretty accurate and they're very very good so things about the World War One so you can yeah, that, that, so around that, that period of the 1914 to 1918 um, Edwardian, if you, if you watch Downton Abbey, you know, it starts, uh, Downton Abbey starts in 1912 and it goes all the way to almost the 1930s, I believe, uh, in season six. Um, you, gosh, you, it is so rich that the things you can read and things you can watch. Uh, and then it gives you an excuse to watch a fantastic series. I'm completely addicted to Downton Abbey. Uh, a fantastic series all over again because now you're just taking notes of the clothing wink wink um, and the very good thing is because there's the servants and the people in town and the rich people you actually get to see uh, the, the variants of the um, the clothing and the tones and the patterns and the things that they were wearing so it's really 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 interesting uh, and in terms of the military the British especially the British military um, officers and uh, privates and corporal clothes um, I shouldn't call them clothes, I should call them uniforms. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a really, really good um, resource to use. Now, if you're looking uh, into colors used in the 50s and the 60s, uh, you might want to watch things like, for example, called The Midwife, which is another program that I love. Um, and it, that's that's really really good as well or like in the 1920s something like the Peaky Blinders it's a very good program to to watch and to just watch the clothes you just you're just studying you're no longer just watching TV doing nothing you're just studying you're researching think about the possibilities you can have go on Netflix put period drama and there you go you, you know don't bother watching the Tudors because there was no photos in the 1500s but then again no one has to know so you know you can still watch the Tudors as well right so this is in terms of uh, period dramas then we also obviously have uh, the best way of research which is live research now unfortunately uh, at the moment here in the UK we're very restricted we're actually on a full lockdown again at the moment due to, due to these uh, terrible pandemic um, but going to museums and uh, seeing exhibitions of, cost of costumes uh, live uh, is a wonderful wonderful thing it really gets you excited because not only you get to see the colors and the patterns uh, you actually get to see the fabrics uh, live sort of close to you you can't touch it unfortunately um, or maybe you can but then you might be arrested and I don't want you to get into any trouble because of my advice so do not touch um, so uh, it, 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 it's amazing. like one of my dreams is to go to 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 see the Met in New York um, they have the most amazing collection of uh, old-fashioned 
um, and it, it's it's unbelievable the collection they have but the amazing thing as well is, is even if you can't get to New York and you can't leave home or you're in England like me so I'm a little bit far uh, you can actually search their collection online so I will put a link to their search uh, bar down in in the in the text of this uh, lesson uh, and basically all you do is you just add I don't know if you put dress 1860s search and a collection of images of dresses from the 1860s that they have there uh, come up so you can really admire and you can really see and you can get inspiration I often uh, have a photo that I need to colorize and then I work out what the date is where the period is and then I go and look and I find a dress that looks similar and then I, I take inspiration from there it's 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 a really fun thing to do um, so the, the the Met Museum to visit is brilliant uh, here in the UK there's the Victorian Albert Museum which is a fantastic uh, museum that one I've had the pleasure of visiting uh, there's also the Fashion Museum in Bath um, in the UK and in Portugal in my country we actually have a costume museum which is really really good uh, and not uh, really rated people don't really know about it so hey shout out for the Museu do Traje in Portugal because it's really really good uh, but it's closed at the moment they're also in in in, uh, in confinement so don't buy your ticket just yet okay so that is um, what, where you can go live to see things then the other way to to do this is research online now we have to be a bit careful when we research online because although we can literally go into Google and put 1900s dress and a load of dresses will come up um, and Pinterests will, will, will come up but we then have to look at the picture and see where the picture is from to make sure it's from a reliable source. This is because there are a lot of enthusiastic hobbyists uh, that um, uh, make dresses and then take photos of them and so they might not be exactly what you're looking for but then you also have uh, hobbyists and uh, craft uh, people that really take this really really serious they research the whole costume they uh, draw the co they, 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 they go and find uh, uh, material uh, I actually know a lady in Illinois that uh, she found someone that um, made the cotton I can't remember the word in English now but basically she made the cotton the way that it was made in the 1800s so then she could reproduce the the dress uh, that she had the plate from her great great grand it's an amazing story I'll actually I'll, I'll find the link and if I if I find it I will also put it down but there are a lot of, uh, of people like that that are very interesting uh, there's a lady called Camille Camilla uh, she has this blog that literally covers the development of fashion from the 1600s to the 1940s now her, her blog is all in Italian but it, you can easily follow it because it's got all dates and pictures uh, and she has lots of photographs of um, uh, dresses um, from, from different museums around the world it's her hobbies to research costume and she's absolutely amazing I'll put the link uh, to that as well so yes there, there are a lot of things that you can do to research so as you can see uh, it's not a scary thing it's actually quite an enjoyable thing and then you will be making your contribution to uh, keeping history alive uh, and to being accurate and to being adequate okay uh, because there is nothing worse imagine like you know you've got a grandfather he died in the war and then someone uh, just colorizes his image without giving it a second thought uh, to what the color of the medals were, to what the color of the uniform were. Um, it, it, it just can come across like a bit of a lack of respect. Uh, and we don't want that because above all, uh, well, I'm, I'm a, a digital artist, but I'm also a genealogist and I'm the family history and the historian and the family curator. Um, and I really want these uh, photos that we create 
to survive the, the, um, the challenge of time and to be seen as something that enhances history, not to replace the black and white photos, uh, not to be used as like a, a gimmick or, or just something like fun. No, we're enhancing history. We are leaving something for the people that come after us uh, and we're trying to, to give an extra interpretation of what life was like. So it's very important to be uh, as uh, accurate uh, and as adequate as possible. Okay, this is how I, this is my opinion and this is how I feel. Uh, and I really hope that uh, most of you, if not all of you, um, will agree uh, with me. Okay, so enough chit chat. Gosh, kept going on, didn't I? Uh, and let's uh, get on with the tutorial and let's look into photo colorization. <laughs> 